Okay, let's talk about the calculations uh, for the zinc iodide lab. And what we have is we have a solid gray zinc metal reacting with iodine, which was a solid and um, uh, nonmetal. And this thing was really interesting. You put it into water and it turns the water like a brownish reddish color. Uh, and it creates something magic, zinc iodide, which is a white solid. Uh, we reacted the two of these. We ended up with leftover zinc. Uh, we ended up with a white solid. So let's let's talk about uh, the math of this reaction. What's really going on? Okay, so I give you the same mass of zinc, one gram of zinc, one gram of iodine, and uh, the next question, the first question is, is we need to go from mass to how many, which we use in moles. So we use the molar mass, which is the mass of a mole of that particular um, element. And a mole, remember, is just a huge number of particles. Um, and we know that one mole of those has this much mass. This is the way we count in chemistry because we can't count, we just, but we can do mass. Um, so here we go. Uh, so one gram, we use the molar mass of zinc, and it's one gram per mole. Remember the units that you start with go on the bottom, the units that you want are on the top. This number comes from the periodic table. Uh, so it's one divided by 65 times one, and that equals 2.0153 moles of zinc. Uh, do the same thing for iodine, and we have the number of moles of iodine. Notice that the molar mass of iodine is I2, so we just find the molar mass of one iodine, multiply it by two, and there you go. And once again, grams of iodine, and now we're converting to moles. So the reason why we did this is, um, if I were to ask, ask you to make s'mores, and I said, okay, here's a pound of chocolate, and a pound of marshmallows, and a pound of graham crackers, how many s'mores can you make? Well, you don't really know, uh, but if you knew how many uh, marshmallows that is, and how many squares of chocolate, and how many uh, pieces of, uh, you know, squares of graham cracker you have, then you can figure out how many you can make. Same thing with chemistry. We gotta go from mass to number of particles, and then we can figure out how much, uh, uh, how many s'mores we can make, okay? So the first way to do that is once we have the moles of what we start with, let's figure out how much product we can make with each one and we use the mole ratios for that. The mole ratios um, uh, are, are pretty straightforward for this reaction. It's a one-to-one -one reaction for every, remember that for every one mole of zinc reacts with one mole of iodine, you get one mole of zinc iodide. If this was one to two or one to four, uh, it's a different thing, but I uh, wanted to keep it simple for this first lab. So here we go. We have one mole of iodine, and we know that for every one mole of iodine, we we can make one mole of zinc iodide. This is a mole ratio. It converts from moles of one to the other. Same thing with zinc. We know we can make this much. Now, one of these creates less than the other, and that will be the limiting reactant. So which one of these is the limiting reactant? That's right. <laughs> it's like Dora the Explorer. That's right. You said it, Diego. <laughs> it's this one. This one here creates a little, uh, less product. So that is the limiting reactant. That's the most we can make, just like when we have sandwiches and cheese and we have a thousand pieces of bread and one piece of cheese, we can only make one sandwich because our cheese ran out. This is our cheese, this is our limiting reactant. And this is our bread, this is our excess reagent. We have a lot more zinc. So we, we would expect in the reaction, all the iodine would get used up and we have extra zinc, which is what we had. Okay, so let's figure it out. And there's the answer to question number four. Using the limiting reactant, predict the mass of the zinc iodide that you can make. So you can only predict how much um, a product you can make uh, based off of your cheese, whichever runs out first, your limiting reactant. So you start with that, and you figure how many moles of zinc iodide that is. So there it is. Look, it's a one-to-one. -one. It's a small number. And then we're in the lab. We're not going to measure moles. We're going to measure mass. So let's convert that to mass. So same thing, moles of zinc iodide, and we have the molar mass of zinc iodide. Notice that the molar mass of zinc iodide is the mass of one zinc plus two iodines all together, okay? And you figure that out, and it's 1.26 grams of zinc iodide. So that's how many, that's how much uh, product we can make, okay? This is how many, and this is how much. This is, this is a number, and this is a weight, or a mass, you know, weight or something, or this thing. So this is how much we should get. So let's see. Um, Using the limiting reactant predicts the moles of the excess reagent. So let's figure out how much of the other reagent we used up. Start out with the limiting reactant. We know that we have to react 0.00394 moles of zinc. Okay. 
So, um, since we started with this many moles of zinc, and we subtract how much reacted, we should have this much zinc left over. Since in the lab we're going to measure mass, let's figure how much that would, uh, that would weigh. Well, actually, let's pause for a second. Uh, the, this is the mass of the zinc that would react. So this many moles of zinc should weigh about 0.25 grams. And since we started with one gram of zinc and 0.26 grams of, sorry, 0.26 grams of zinc reacted, we should have about 0.74 grams left over. Uh, you could also um, uh, solve it with moles and go there, but you know, the math is pretty straightforward. All right, so let's, uh, let's go to our chart. So uh, this is the mass that we started with, okay? And uh, we know that all the iodine is going to get used up because it's the limiting reactant. So there it goes. Uh, we predicted for zinc iodide, we started out with zero. And we, just, we predicted that the amount of grams of zinc iodide that was made is 1.26 grams of zinc iodide. So that should be here. There we go. And we started out with one gram of zinc. Uh, and we predicted that uh, we're going to lose... Uh, you know, 0.26, and we're going to have 0.74 grams left over. So there it is, uh, 0.75. And then, oh, look, look at that. That's the wrong number. Let's change that right now. So the change is going to be uh, minus uh, 0.25 grams. So we're losing that many grams. Okay, notice that um, we're losing one gram of here and losing 0.25 grams here, and we gain 1.25 grams of product. So that, that's a mass argument that shows you that the mass of the iodine that we lose and zinc it doesn't disappear, it turns into this new product. Cool. Uh, let's put our numbers in. This is the moles that we started with each one that we calculated. Okay. Uh, then we're losing all of the moles of uh, iodine, so we're at minus 0.039. And we know that we're subtracting 0 0.0039 moles of zinc from what we start with, and you get this number here. And then we know since it's a mole to one to one mole ratio, that we're gaining one mole of, uh, the, of zinc iodide for every one mole of each. But since it's 0 0.0039 moles of this that we're losing at each one, we're gaining 0 0.0039 moles. Cool. So there's uh, all of our data. So we should expect in the lab to have at the end about 1.25 grams of the white powder. All the iodine should be gone, and we should have about uh, 0.75 grams of zinc left over. So let's see how it went. You do the math, you fill in your charts, okay. Um, there it is, you can, you can have your data. Say that uh, at the end of my uh, zinc iodide, I end up with 1.10 uh, uh, grams of zinc iodide. Let's, let's do the math, let's see how it goes. Percent error is how off you are. So it's the predicted amount minus the experimental over predicted. So for zinc leftover, um, I predicted 0.75 leftover, but say I got 0.78. Let's see what percent that is uh, error. Uh, so it's 0.75 minus 0.78 divided by 0.75. And it's absolute value because it it's, doesn't matter if it's negative or positive. So let's undo that. And that's about a 4% error. Not too bad. I made these numbers up, so probably in lab, uh, your first shot, it'll be a lot higher. And now for the zinc iodide. I predicted uh, 1.25, and I got 1.10. I lost some. Say I spilled a little bit. So I subtract those two divided by 1.25 times 100, and that's a 5% error. Not bad for fake numbers. Okay, hope this helps.